Hi, it's Brother Richard. And today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 235. <clears throat> our topic, Twilight for Humanity, Part 2. Scripture teaches, or Scripture indicates, the human race <clears throat> under corrupt spiritual leadership will bring upon itself a judgment. 1 Timothy, 3rd chapter, verse 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such, turn away. So this is going to be the result of corrupted leadership on a spiritual and a physical plane. The leaders that deal with the physical aspects of society, that is the business aspects, education aspects, judicial aspects, all will become corrupted and corrupt the society. And the leadership that deals with the spiritual welfare of the nation will become just as corrupt. So it's speaking about a time you can't tell Christian from a non-Christian, they'll both have the same characteristics. That is a detestation in the sight of God. When do we first see the time where you can't discern the difference between the two? You're seeing it now. Okay. So, by the time of the beginning of sorrows, it, it should be full by. The beginning of sorrows is a judgment that's going to fall on him. So what's happening is the human <coughs> race is building up wrath upon itself mm. day by day. So when people say these are the last days, or the end times, I don't think they grasp how close we are, because yeah. it's literally days away. Yeah, the significance of it, yes. Now, turn to Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words. And say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, <coughs> and utter his voice from his holy habitation. Now when it talks about uttering his voice and roaring from on high, it's talking about the Lord speaking a judgment upon the earth. A sentence a proclamation aimed at specific individuals and the human race as a whole. So the inference is he's going to speak an indictment upon the human race. You know when you're standing in court, you've been found guilty, and the last thing they do is they say the judge will pass sentence, sentence. upon the individual, and the judge enumerates the crime, and he enumerates what the punishment for the crime will be before they take the guy away. This is similar to what's going to be, going to be taking place. Interestingly, in the UK, mm -hmm. after all that's been said, they then say, take him down. <laughs> Which is reminiscent <laughs> yeah, of where yeah, they yeah, Yes, yeah. yes. 
He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. Now, what we find here, <clears throat> it's repeated that this is a judgment against the whole human race. Uh, read verse 29. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, Jerusalem. And should you be utterly unpunished, you shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. So what we find here is <coughs> twofold. It's a judgment that's going to engulf the whole human race. Then, drop down to verse 31. A mm -hmm. noise shall come up even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nation. He will plead. The word plead there is not what you think it is. Comes from a Hebrew term, safat, which means to pass judgment mm -hmm. upon. Hath a controversy with the nations. He shall plead. He shall pass judgment. <clears throat> Basically, what he's referring to is he's going to pass judgment on the human race as its nations are composed. There's a controversy with the uh, nations, the ethnic groups, the families of the human race, and this is how the judgment is going to be imparted. It's going to be imparted upon the sins of a particular individual, the sins of a particular ethnic group that that individual is part of. The sins of <clears throat> humanity as a whole and the sins of the countries that comprise humanity. So this is a judgment that's going to deal with several different aspects of the human race. It's going to come on the human race as a whole. It's going to fall on the families of the human race selectively. How does that happen? Well, we see in the next pass passage. A noise or a sound shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord of the controversy with the nations, he will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. <clears throat> and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. So this is the response, this is the judgment upon the families of the human race. Turn to math, uh, turn to Luke 21. Verse 10. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. So what's being said here, <coughs> you compare verse 9 to verse 10. Verse 9 is a continual flow of events taking place from the time of his ascension back to heaven to the time of the interruption with that flow of events. So should we understand that wars and commotions have been ongoing for 2,000 years? Yes. Right. Yes. Unbroken. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you shall have wars and rumors of war and commotions. Be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. In other words, the sins of man are bringing this stuff on the earth. God's not interfering with it. It's a result of the decision of men under the influence of Satan. 
is going to continue to a certain point. What is that point? When he pronounces judgment. Remember what it said. He pronounces judgment against the human race as a whole. He pronounces judgment upon the nations of the human, families of the human race. Which is verse 10. Nation shall rise against nation. Now between verse 9 and verse 10, he's pronounced judgment. That's why he talks about this is the beginning of sorrows. Because he has intervened. There now is the process of God's time clock is starting to tick. Progressing toward the end of his plan, if you will. It starts with nation against nation. Why? Because he said an emotion with he with he descended. He didn't descend, but he deals with the human race from his position in the heavens. He pronounces a judgment. When that judgment goes forth, it's his word. It sets things in motion. It first starts with nation rising against nation. Now turn back to Jeremiah twenty fifth chapter. Verse 26. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So basically what's being said here, <coughs> all the nations drink from the judgment cup. They rise and they go against each other. Then all the countries drink from the judgment cup and they rise against each other. So you have a cataclysmic upheaval that destroys human society and all that pertains to it. It is a judgment which, remember what the Father tells the Son, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Human race is the first enemy that's going to be brought down. It's going to lose its position of rulership over the surface of the earth. It's going to become a vassal race to the Luciferians. Never again will they have an authority well, in which it's not going to be ruled over. Turn to Matthew, 24th chapter. The human race has been ruled over since its inception, right? Yes, because of its fall. Verse 7 and 8. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So what you have here is a pronouncement in verse 7 of the judgment against the nations. In verse, <clears throat> in verse 8, he gives, he coins what it is. It's the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of the, actually the beginning of the end of the age, if you will, of the rule of the Luciferians, the human race activities, everything now is going to be brought into a different, radically different state of existence. Now, let's take note of something here. We're going to turn to the corollary. Then we'll come back to the lesson. But it is this juncture that we're going to fill in some things. <clears throat> nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, beginning of sorrows. 
Now, what leads to that? One of the things that leads to this has to do with <coughs> the church becoming corrupted. The church falls away. Apostasy. We are looking at the beginnings of the church apostasy. What does that lead to? Turn to 2 Thessalonians 2nd chapter. When you get there, we want verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. The falling away is the apostasia, the affection from truth. <clears throat> and that man of sin <coughs> be revealed. Now when you look at this, you're thinking it's a, the next thing that's going to progress, falling away and then suddenly he's going to appear. It's not what it's saying. What it's saying is events that are going to create great changes. <clears throat> the apostasia, he says, happens first. We are seeing that now. <clears throat> the next great event is going to take place as a result of the apostasy. I'm going to tell you what that is momentarily. Before I tell you what that is, I want to focus on what he continues to say. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. And that man of sin be revealed. So the apostasy starts. Something happens. The man of sin is revealed. The man of sin, revelation, puts a stop to the apostasy. Why? Because... What's the something that happens? I'm going to tell you. Okay. Terribly. But first we're going to see why it is that he does what it is that he does when he makes his appearance. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. What does that mean? That means with the apostasy comes the gods. Mm. They continue until the man of sin is revealed who puts a stop to them by exalting himself over all of them. Is that the first king that comes up showing favor to the humans? That's a bunch of kings that come up. <clears throat> at which time, let's take a look at the bunch of kings that are ultimately going to come up before the beast exalts himself. Daniel 11, verse 36 to 39. Then 11, verse 36. And the king, the beast, the Antichrist, he's appearing now, shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself, just like 2 Thessalonians says, he'll exalt himself. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, the Father, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that, that is determined, shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. God of his fathers is going to be in vogue before he makes his appearance. Nor the desire of women, 
nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. What does that mean? The apostasy takes place, judgment falls, the gods arise, multitudes of them, the God of his fathers, <coughs> force God, little gods, alien gods, they're all coming up. Now turn to Matthew 24. They come up long before he does. <coughs> it's going to happen so quickly, from what I'm reading in the scriptures, that there, there's no way that the human race is going to comprehend it. Let them be prepared for it. So in verse 7 again, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Nation against nation, kingdom. This is the breakdown of human order. What does that mean? You have no human authority. No army, no navy, no police force. No aspect of human society to enforce laws or regulations or even bring about a stability in the organized process of life of people. It's gone. Been done away with. The nations have fallen. The kingdoms have fallen. They have nothing but <laughs> tribal society. Okay, against that backdrop, notice what it's saying. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then, then, shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. How is this happening? Who are you being delivered up to if human society has fallen? The kings, the guys, they've risen up and taken dominion over the surface of the world suddenly. And the human race is now in subjection to whoever it is that they are in proximity to. Force God, the God of his fathers, alien God, the, the, the king that comes up with his entourage. The world now is in the hands of the Luciferians. It's going to happen swiftly. Now, Verse 10, Then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. These aren't humans, these are Luciferians. Why? Because how are you going to have false prophets when they don't know what the heck is going on? Who, who can give you deception when nobody knows the truth? All this is Luciferian. But the, the, the argument would be, even though the false prophet, from a human perspective, doesn't know what's going on, he'll just make up any story to present that as the truth. Well, who's going to believe him? No, no, no one knows. No one knows anything, do they? That's right. So why should they believe this guy? No. you got to have something on the ball to back up what you're saying. Okay, poof disappears. Poof, I disappear. Poof. This guy uh, can take something and fling it off into space. This guy can call fire down from the skies. I'm going to give you what happened. That's Luciferian. Right. Yes. The supernatural will be the leading edge yes. on everything. Yes. Deceptive. Anybody that can perform miracles or do something supernatural will be considered Turn back to Second Thessalonians. Verse nine. <clears throat> Verse 
even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All of them will be miracle workers. <clears throat> he's just the greatest because he's got more power than any other. But that's why he's able to exalt himself over all of them. But they capture the human race through deception, subtlety, and false power. As it powers, it's dynamis, mm -hmm. but the rationale for it is a lie. It's done to ag to aggrandize the individual that's doing it, so that they can get veneration and ultimate power over the people trying to deceive. So, from that, then we understand that it's not possible for a human false prophet to be walking around because he would be under the same influence that everyone else's. <clears throat> That's what we're going to go into next. Turn to um, back to the lesson. Second Peter Second chapter verse one. What happens to the corrupted organized religious leadership? You have to deal with the false prophets from the perspective of who they're representing. Second Peter Second chapter, verse 1. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Note that term, swift destruction, is going to come on organized religion, religious leaders. Are we understanding at this time that the human false prophets are fully receiving the influence of the enemy to continue to be false prophets? Ain't no human false prophets as you'll see. Okay. Second Peter, second chapter, verse 17. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Remember what Peter said, swift destruction is going to come on them. What kind of swift destruction? The darkness <coughs> of the interior in which they're going to be cast into. Now drop uh, go to Jude 12 to 13. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So scripture is teaching us that they are going to be tossed into <clears throat> the death zones of the torment regions of hell at the time of this judgment. Now, you said that would be the organized the leadership of organized religion. And who else? Turn to Jeremiah twenty five again. More specifically tele evangelists. <clears throat> Turn to Jeremiah twenty five. <laughs> what the scripture did the describing <clears throat> it's 
Starting in verse 34, Jeremiah 25. Yes. Howl, ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. So what do we have? Church leadership. Organized religious leaders, the elders, the pastors, anybody affiliated with that denominational organization. Continue on. For the days of your slaughter and your dispersions are accomplished, and you shall fall like a pleasant vessel. So when he pronounced judgment, he's pronouncing judgment on the human race, on the nations, on the kingdoms, and on the religious leaders. So if you have a false prophet, he cannot come out of organized religion. Right. He cannot be teaching organized Christianity. Why? Because he'd be killed. Turn back, Matthew 24. There's going to be a backlash against Christianity and Christians. <clears throat> Verse 8 and 9. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. For my name's sake. If you speak the name of Christ, you take your life in your hands. Right. On a global scale. And that's why there can't be any false prophets mentioning Christ. Human. Yeah. And of course it wouldn't be the Luciferians anyway, so. Then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. People can't wait to disengage themselves from being Christians by turning in other Christians, ingratiating themselves <coughs> with the society of the Luciferians that they're under to carry the favor of these individuals. So as we're seeing with current trends, movies and TV shows, that sort of thing, the Luciferians are being presented as the real gods, the progenitors of humanity, those who you know, sow the seed, those who put them on this planet, so on and so on. We, we see that as proliferating, yes. uh, proliferating all over the place. Yes. And at the time of the false prophet, that will be the story. With, as, as, uh, as Brace says, you know, all sorts of miracles. Yeah. The, the, the word Christ is long, long dead. Long gone. Yeah. And people are deceived to a point where Christianity is no longer involved, but what will happen is the Father is going to overshadow all that. So, at that time, those who came out of organized religion, not because they're sticking with uh, the Lord, but because they're influenced by the Luciferians, yes. will never go through a, a period where they think that they're still serving Christ, because immediately they would have made that decision, wouldn't they? Sure. Hmm. The idea is to reject Christ. You're in a Christ-rejecting society. Right. Or even to mention the name of Christ gets you killed. There is um, uh, turn to oh no, you're in Matthew. Drop down to verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations then shall the end come. This happens through the pronunciation of those in the heavens. You can't stop and block out the Word of God. It's going to be preached, people are going to hear, and you're going to hear martyrs as a result of that. Sure. So all the congregations of the current yeah, organized church, unless they're studying these teachings, they don't stand a chance. No. Not a single chance. Not at all. That it, you know, it, it has to be a situation where the Lord, the Father, excuse me, um, sovereignly makes a move on certain Moves, people. Yes. Right, on certain people. Yes. Listen, you haven't got a clue. 
this is what time it is. Let me move you out of the way because you have no idea what that what's will happen to the people of the saints. Right. They're going to miss the rapture, they'll miss the gathering, but they're going to be preserved to the second coming.